People make stupid and crazy claims all the time, and with the growth of the internet and social media, these claims are getting more and more light. But even above all of these stupid claims, one claim has taken the throne of being the most absurd thing. And that claim is, the Earth is flat? There's many ways to disprove the Earth being flat, whether it be complex formulas or some other elegant mathematical solutions, but we're gonna disprove it with one simple thing. Bread. So let's make some. Now, while the bread is in the oven, let me explain exactly how bread is going to help us debunk the flat earth. You see, I only put a little bit amount of dough into this pan, so we'll have a flat bottom and the top will be round, similar to a cross section of a sphere, and it will symbolize the curved earth. And for this, we will use the flat bottom to symbolize the flat earth and the round top to symbolize the normal curved earth. Now, before we even get to using baked bread as an example, the first thing I want to bring to your attention is the dough. I always spank my dough. Now you see this goopy, droopy, not a liquid, not a solid form necessarily. It wants to fall due to gravity, and it's widely recognized by many people that that is the force that holds things together, gravity. But, but when we're talking about a spherical Earth, gravity makes sense, but how would it work on a flat Earth? A simple explanation of gravity from the perspective of spherical planets is that gravity is a plane. Almost think of a blanket laying on top of your bed. Mass bends space. If you throw something on top of your blanket, your bed will sink in. In the same way, mass bends space causing gravity causing attraction between things more mass more attraction more gravity simple but how would it work if the earth was flat firstly a pancaked planet might not have any gravity it's unclear of how gravity would work or even be created because it wouldn't just be this downward force that's constantly across the whole entire plane of the planet the moon would cease to orbit the sun would cease to orbit and instead they would just travel and fly off after completing one course gravity would also pull the edges to the center of the flat flat disk, causing the gravity at the edges to pull horizontally. And if we just let gravity take its course, the sides are going to crumple up into the middle and it's going to turn into a sphere. Now that we talked about dough, let's look at the bread. Oh, perfect. It's done. Um, a quick side note before we go on, I actually ran out of yeast and as it turns out, yeast matters when baking bread, so it turned out flatter than my egg. <clears throat> I ran out of yeast and, I mean, for more yeast, I could have just got some if I asked your mom. Now, going on to the next point, here is the bread. Like I said, it's going to have this rounded top similar to the cross section of a sphere while also having a flat bottom. So let's just go on to our next example. Now, when looking at the shadows cast by objects, viewing things from a distance using this flat edge, we can see that depending on the distance from the sun, in this case a flashlight, it casts two different length shadows. When looking at things at a distance, say a really tall city for example, we can see it because the light bends due to the air, and it's bent due to the curvature of the earth. Now, if the Earth was flat, however, we wouldn't just be able to view around 10 miles or so into the distance, but the distance that we could see would be many times greater because of this light not being bent, not being scattered as much. Now, there's a really cool example of this phenomenon on YouTube where people take a laser, for example, on the beach. They set it a distance away from a board and measure where the laser hits. So if the Earth was flat, for example, the laser would hit at a certain point, say 5 feet above the ground, but if it was a sphere, it would hit somewhere else, say 7 feet above the ground. And what the laser theory does is it proves the fact that the earth is spherical because it hits in the upper part where the light is being bent. The second thing we can use the bread for plays off the first aspect. Now, when objects such as ships are going over the horizon, they disappear from view. Why is that? It's because of the point that we talked about just now, where the light doesn't bend enough to reach our eyes past the point. Now, if we use a toothpick with a little blue marker, you can see the line get lower and lower to the horizon made by the bread until it's not visible. Now in the same way, instead of looking at the curved earth, we look at the flat side. No matter where you put it, it will always be visible. So even on such a small scale, we can see that it's clearly evident that the horizon works in a manner of a spherical planet and not a flat one. Now, there are just some last points that I want to touch on, just logical things that make sense. For example, the shadow of a moon during an eclipse, it's round. Now, if we look at the flat part of the bread versus the round part of the bread in the flashlight beam, that proves that. Secondly, if everything around us is a sphere, stars, planets, even asteroids and comets being this crude spherical shape, why would we be on a flat plane? The next point is the fact that if it was a flat plane, the sun would orbit around us. But the sun isn't just a light source that orbits us on a flat plane. That's why 
why it doesn't change size during the day is because we orbit it on a spherical planet. It's equal distance and size at all times, or else it would increase in size until noon and then shrink once again during the night. Is this a dumb reason to make bread? Yeah, probably, but it still tasted yummy, so no harm done. More importantly, what did we actually learn? We learned that bread can not only be used for eating, but also disproving the flat earth and by theories of logic using hands-on examples. But we also learned that the real bread might just be the friends we made along the way. Bread.